the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. The Bible declares in the book of the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, I want to begin by reading in your hearing verse 18. The Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And again, for this video series, I've taken for a subject matter, when the sacrifice got up, let us pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you and I bless you. I honor you. Great are you, God, and greatly to be praised. We thank you tonight, Father God, for all that you have done. Now, let your favor, Father God, just fall right now. Let your favor fall, Father. Let your favor fall on uh, this teaching, Father God. Let your glory be revealed, Father God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Uh, oh, I pray, God, that as we began to look at the scripture, you would illuminate it to us, God. Uh, open up our understanding uh, that we might be able to comprehend thine law. Uh, oh, Father, anoint our ears that we may be able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us today, Father God. So I pray, Father, and I come against every evil spirit, Father, every hindrance, everything I bind, everything working against me, Father. And I pray in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God, that your will would be done even in this study, Father. Your will be done with your people, Father. We hear you, Father God. We hear your voice, God. We hear, God, what you're saying, God. And you have our attention, Father. We love you. We love you, God. We adore you, God. We worship you, God. We praise you, God. We say there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like you. Hallelujah. There's no God in the heavens. There's no God on the earth. Oh, and there's no God coming after you, Father. Oh, there was none before you. You are the true and the living God. Ah, oh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All will see and all will know that you are Lord. Hallelujah. So I give you praise, great God. I bless you, God, for all that you have done. You have been good to us, and we appreciate you, Lord. And so, Father, as we study this, when the sacrifice got up, hallelujah, because he got up out of that grave. Bless his holy name. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you would lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified, my Lord, and you would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, God, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray, Father, and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When Jesus walked on this earth, you know, although many of the Pharisees and Sadducees and all of those that were against him, they hated him, our Lord was blessed with friends who loved him. Hallelujah. And what I know about the people that God has anointed, you know, when the anointing is resting on you, hallelujah, people will either love you or they'll hate you. You know, they'll dislike you. And Jesus certainly had many that loved him, not just because uh, he was the anointed one, the Christos, hallelujah. Not only because, you know, all that he was, but because of what he was to them. Uh, he was a friend to them. Uh, he was a comfort to them. Uh, hallelujah. He protected them. He healed them. He fed them. He was embodied. He was the embodiment of love. Hallelujah. Everything that the Father 
Father wanted us to know we can look to Jesus' life uh, to see what the Father was saying through God the Son. Blessed be his holy name. And one of the things that I discovered about him, you know, when you read the accounts in the Bible about Jesus' encounter with the Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, he, he would always say they were like their father, the devil. You know, they hated him. And the reason why, you know, he was a threat to them. He was a threat to, you know, their little religion. They had all, you know, because they, they had created their own, you know. They had all of the law, but they had no love. And when you have all of the law, but you have no love, uh, there's an imbalance, hallelujah, that takes place. But you know what? Jesus was totally balanced. He had the truth. He was the way he is, I should say. The way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. And he also demonstrated so much love that no man has ever, you know, no man has ever matched. And so he kind of shook the little Pharisees, you know, trying to be so religious and so pious with their, you know, with the law. You know, here came Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, the embodiment of love. And you know what? As I thought about that, I was thinking about that story found in the Gospel of Luke. In the 10th chapter, beginning at, I believe, around the 25th verse, the Bible lets us know that there was this man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And on his way to Jericho, he met up with a band of thieves and this band of thieves the bible says whipped them and stripped them of his clothing the bible also lets us know that a good samaritan showed up and this good samaritan hallelujah began to minister healing to this man and as i thought about the story and thought about our lord jesus isn't that what Jesus did for us? He came and he stooped down to our level, meaning he walked on this earth, hallelujah, and he walked amongst the people whom, you know, he got talked about many times for associating with. But Jesus said, you know, he didn't come for those that didn't need anybody, but he came for those uh, that were sick, uh, those that were sick that needed a physician Jesus came that he might minister healing to them hallelujah as he walked on this earth we can bless God tonight for the Savior that got up out of that grave for the one who left heaven on high Jesus hallelujah and he came down to pay the price for our sins and as I thought about that you know, it's no wonder that the Bible says going into our text in the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter and the um, ninth verse, it says, And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Verse 11 says, now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. Again, when you are anointed, and just thinking about this little scenario, Jesus had Mary's running, testifying about him, telling the disciples, come on, let's go see him. He has risen. And then he had those that did not fear God, you know, on the other hand, still testifying. And as I thought about that, you know, when you are anointed as Jesus was, not only will the people of God testify about you, but you'll have even those who don't fear God. But see God's hand upon your life. Hallelujah. They'll also testify. You know, they'll also be talking about you as well. And what those guards at that tomb saw, 
it was undeniable that a hallelujah a miracle had taken place the, the stone in front of the tomb had been rolled away by the angel of the lord and when the higher when the guards looked in what did they see they saw an empty tomb where was jesus hallelujah and they began to panic and they went back to report that jesus whom they had crucified and laid in that tomb got up you know i never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story. The Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb, because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16 he says for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to wash away all of your sins Romans 10 9 says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.